everyone, it's Lisa from I Dream in Soap. Welcome to my channel. Thanks so much for dropping by. Now, this video is my attempt at the November 2022 soap challenge where we had to do the splash swirl. I've actually been having a really busy month this month. So the first soap that you'll actually see me making here is something that I made previously. I've done a splash swirl in the past and videoed it. So technically the first soap that I made didn't fit the guidelines or fall within the rules because you have to use a soap for the challenge that you've made during the challenge period. But it was a video I had of this technique, so therefore that's the one that I've got first because I was severely out of time. And I did manage to squeeze in a proper attempt for the challenge and I've just Pop that in at the end so you can see the soap that I actually submitted. This soap is actually going to be a pretty quick one to make. Well, quick for me anyway, because it's just really a type of hanger swirl. So the first thing I'm going to do is prepare my colours. For the bulk of my soap, I'm going to use this beautiful antique silver from Mica Mama. And then my highlight, as it were, I'm going to be using Turquoise Delight, which is my favourite mica from Pure Rock Colours. And I'm also gonna have a tiny little bit of titanium dioxide. Okay, and then for each of these colours, I always just take some of the oil from my batch of oils that I'm going to be using. You can do this, this is fine. Or if you want to just use additional, some sort of lightweight oil, something like an olive oil, then that will work too. If you do use additional oil, just bear in mind that's going to slightly alter your super fat. You're only going to be adding a very small amount in, so it's not really going to make much of a change. Right, so there's those all prepared. Let's now prepare our soap. So these are my oils all melted. Now we do want this, for this technique to stay reasonably fluid, it doesn't need to be super thin trace, but it doesn't want to stiffen up us, because as I said, we're basically doing a hanger swirl, so we do want the soap to move a bit. Okay, so I'm at 91 there. And my light solution is a bit cooler, as we can see that sort of low 80s on the lye solution. So I think between the two, when I pour one into the other, that will even out and give me a nice sort of temperature range that I'm looking for. Okay, so for this technique, as it's just a type of hanger swirl, we're just gonna mix everything up together, no separate little mini batches or anything. Now what I'm going to do is because I will need to split this off and do the colours so before I actually blend it together I'm just going to weigh all of this and then work out how I'm going to do my split. You could just eyeball it and pour a little bit off but I'm just going to do it so I'm going to have the bulk of it, sort of 80% of it is going to be my main colour and then I just want my accent colour to be 20% of the soap. So I'm going to get those figures ready now before I start blending those together. The other thing we're going to need for this technique is a hanger tool. Now you can buy a gear tie, you can buy a proper hanger tool. I don't want something that's too fat. I've actually literally got a wire hanger here. <laughs> But I do think this wire hanger would have been too thin. It would have just not moved from enough soap. So all I've got is just a little bit of plastic pipe there. Cut it to the size of my mould. Okay, so that will fit in. And then I bent my hanger up so that goes in nice and tight. But yeah, you can buy them. You can use something like a gear tie. You can just get those easily off Amazon or just make one yourself. Okay, so let's get this blended up. Okay, I think that'll be fine. Now that may have seemed that I blended for an awful long time there. And I think you need to be very careful when you hear people say, oh, I blend for like five seconds or I do this or whatever, because the size of the batch of soap you've got makes a huge difference. And also your stick blender. My stick blender 
has a very low powered setting that I use all the time, the number one setting on mine, and it blends really gently. So therefore, I'm, I've got a, another stick bender that I use quite often as well. The difference between the two, if I was blending this with my other stick blender, I literally would have probably blended it for two or three seconds because it's so powerful. Whereas this one has got a lovely gentle blend on it. So therefore it may look like I was blending for like 30 or 40 seconds, but it all depends on your stick blender. So don't just listen to people who go, oh, I do it for this many seconds or whatever. It just completely depends on the amount of soap you've got and how powerful your stick blender is and whether it's got different settings on it. So you need to be careful and just make sure you're looking at your soap and what's happening in your soap and have you got it to an emulsified state rather than just, oh, I've got to do it for seven seconds or something. Right, I'm just gonna get this split out. So I'm gonna weigh off the bits that I need into these little pots. My scales are over there, so I'm gonna do it off screen. So, let's get the right things in the right pots. This tall pot here with the biggest amount of accent colour is going to be my beautiful turquoise delight. I'm just going to plop that in at the moment and not worry about mixing it because it does accelerate trace. This is my TD. It was already in the jar. I'm going to again just mix that in. And then lastly, for my base of my soap, my antique silver. For my fragrance oil, I'm using Sauvage from Craftivator in the UK. It is a savage dupe so a nice manly fragrance I really like it as well and you often find that a lot of ladies do like the manly fragrances anyway so let's just get that weighed out now as this is a just basically a swirled soap I'm not going to worry about dividing the fragrance oil exactly because essentially it's all going to end up pretty well in the same place so I'm just going to do the good old eyeballing technique we're ready for our pour. I'm just going to keep an eye on this because at the moment I've not really got any trace. My turquoise is my dodgiest one so that's one I really need to keep an eye on to make sure it's not getting too thick. So I'm not going to blend these anymore. I'm just going to wait for them to come to the desired trace that I want and when that's happened I'm going to pour them. I think we're at the right sort of point now so I've definitely got a nice trace on that. Still nice and fluid, but it's not too runny. So I'm just going to gently pour this into the mould. Pretty well all of it straight in at the bottom. And I'm just being very careful about the way I'm pouring that in, just because if we pour it slower, we get less, fewer bubbles in our soap and we get a smoother soap. So just good practice to just take a little bit of time, even if it's something really simple, like just pouring a block of colour into your soap. Now, I'm not doing a fancy top on this. I'm going to do a textured top. So I'm just going to get rid of all of this straight away. Okay, let's get that levelled out. Now what I want to do with my white is I sort of want to have it as a, a little bit of a sort of outline as it were. So I'm trying to keep it towards the top of this. I don't want it dropping down like a drop swirl. So I'm just using 
my spatula to break the fall. Can you see how fluid that is? I'm not trying to get a layer, I'm just trying to... I'm just I'm sort of wiggling. Can you see how I'm wiggling my spatula to sort of flick it over the surface of the soap? To try and get myself, as much as I can, a nice white, little thin white layer. And then again, let's now just repeat that with our blue. So I don't want to push through. It doesn't matter if I push through a bit, because remember, I'm going to swirl this anyway. So now we should be ready to do our hanger swirl. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hanger and I'm just going to measure against the side of the mould, sort of about, because I don't want to go all the way to the bottom. So I'm just sort of putting this down the side of my mould to sort of about the distance that I want to go. And I think that's good for me. It goes nearly to the bottom but not all the way through. Now, even though this is called a hanger swirl, you don't swirl it, you just literally go up and down. So we're just going to go down to where I want to go, across a little bit and then straight up. Down, across a little bit and then straight up. Okay, then if you may feel like maybe you want some more, perhaps some at slightly different heights. Okay, then I'm just going to go for one bit further down in the middle. Right, I think that's going to do me. Now, I'm just going to have to leave that for a little while because, as I said, I'm going to do a slightly textured top. I'm not, I'm not going to go mad on the texture on the top there. Okay, so I'm just going to do my top. I'm just going to do a sort of simple textured, just by sort of flipping across. And I think that will do. So I'm just going to gel that overnight and then we can cut it tomorrow. Here's our soap for the next day, so let's get it cut, shall we? There we go. Oh, that looks really pretty, doesn't it? I quite like that. Um, it maybe could have done with a little bit more blue on the top, but I do quite like that I've got the blue and the white in there. I've not done it with the two colours before, and I do quite like it. I do think if I do it again, I might add a little bit more of the blue, or whatever colour I choose for the accent, and perhaps slightly less of the white, to see if I can get that more outline-y sort of look. But I do really like that. Let's have a look at another couple. Let's go further along, shall we? Ah, there we go. I do like that. Nice sort of drop down with that soap. Okay, so a nice sort of simple design to do. And you can do it the other way round. You can do it sort of coming up from the bottom as well as going down from the top. I 
I've decided I'm gonna have another go at my splash swirl. So I've just got some other colours here um, and I've got some brown, some grey, some antique silver, some white titanium dioxide and some pink there, it's called Red Riot. And I'm gonna do a base of gold, golden shimmer. Now, the fragrance I'm using here, I'm being a bit naughty, I'm using a fragrance without testing it, but I've seen some reviews of this fragrance from some people I really trust with their reviews. So they're, I'm just gonna go for it. They say it doesn't accelerate or accelerates just a tiny weeny bit, so I should be okay. Now, this fragrance is Cashmere Woods from Stock Fragrance. Okay, so I'm gonna have a go with that. So the first thing I want to do is, I want to do sort of an ombre on the bottom. So let me get rid of all those. Those are my little accents colours. I've got another brown here. I'm going sort of for a brownie look as it's cashmere woods. Okay, so I'm going to start off with an ombre and I want it to be quite a steep ombre as it were where I want to get the sort of dark colour finished pretty quickly so it's light around where I'm going to actually do my swirl. Okay, so hopefully you can sort of see that. Okay, so I'm putting quite a hefty bit of the brown colour in first of all, because I wanted to have a definite brown on the bottom, and then I'm going to bring in the others. Now I am going to, although with an ombre I would normally pour the rest of this on the side that I ombre it, I'm actually going to pour it all over so I get sort of that colour all the way on the top, I want that. Okay, now this definitely has thickened up more than I hoped, <laughs> but that's the risk of just popping something in without doing a little tester first, which I never do, but I still think it could be okay. Right, level that off. Right, let's get these other colours done then. So the first thing I want to do is do a little pink sort of outline layer. just so I can get it nicely laid evenly all over. Right, and then these other colours. So I've got the brown, the grey and the white.
Now I was going to go with my really thin hand out. I don't know if this is going to move enough soap. I'm just going to give it a little test and see if it seems to be dragging well enough. I think I might be all right. Yes. I'm going to leave it at that. Now although that thickened initially, which is one of the reviews that I read, said it thickened initially to a bit of a trace, but then it stayed at that trace for ages, which is kind of what I found, is it went a little bit past that, you know, really, really light trace that I like. But I know I've not been working with it that long. It's kind of stayed. at that rather nice sort of hanger swirl type trace. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave that like that. I'm still not sure whether I should have used a thicker hanger. We'll find out when I cut it. Now, it's quite likely I won't be recording the cut. I'm literally making this right up against the deadline. The submission date for this is tomorrow. So I've got to get it um, saponified. I've got to get it cut, photographed and everything done. So it, I, I'm unlikely to take time out of that and video the cut and all the editing that goes with that as well. So I will obviously do the cutting and everything. And you've seen the making of it and then I will put some photos up of what it turned out like. And here to finish off is a picture of that final soap that I made and I did manage to just squeeze it in before the deadline. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you like the soap. If you have it would be great if you gave me a thumbs up because that really does help my channel. If you'd like to see what I'm making in the future why not subscribe to my channel. Thanks a lot for watching everyone. Happy soaping!